Hey everyone, it's Kelly from Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. In this video I'm going to make the second of the three wedding favour soaps that I need to do and I am really really hoping that this time the fragrance oil does behave and that I won't make so many silly mistakes while making it and hopefully we will get that really nice swirl through this one. Now when I offered the fragrances to my customer of what we could do, I was looking at fragrances with 0% vanillin in them and one of them I offered was Raspberry Violet. I then realised when I went to order it that it actually wasn't skin safe. So I started doing a little bit of a look around and I know I've used raspberry fragrance before. So I got in the fresh raspberry from Aroma and then I went to onto Aussie Soap Supplies who sell the Brambleberry fragrances and I got Violet. Both of these are body safe and I've blended the two together at a 50-50 ratio and it smells just like the Aroma, Raspberry and Violet um, fragrance oil so that's what we're going with today she also wanted this one again to have some botanicals on the top and because this has notes of rose and jasmine through it I will be putting rose petals and jasmine flowers onto the top once done and we will also be using the same color palette of that vintage rose and then a little bit of wisteria and um, nimbus mica mixed together to get that sort of dusky lavender color so we'll go ahead and get started and let's hope that this one actually does as I want it to do so first thing I'm going to do into my oils which are at room temperature I'm going to pour in my lye water solution and I'm pouring down the stick blender just to stop any of that splashback I'm then going to mix it up and then split it out for the colors before pouring into the mold Okay, so although I have actually soaked with the fresh raspberry fragrance before um, when we made the fresh raspberry soap and I know it played really well, I don't know how the, uh, the violet one behaves. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour in a little bit into this purple first just to see what happens. Give it a bit of a stir. It's smelling really nice. It's got a really nice sweet smell of the raspberry but then that nice violet smell through it too. That seems to be stirring in really well so I'm going to pour in the rest of my fragrance and then we're going to do a drop swirl. My dog has obviously seen something out on the street that she's trying to get to. So we'll get this all stirred in and then into the mould. Okay, so we've got our mould here and I've got it all lined and first thing I'm going to do is pour in my white. It has stayed really nice and fluid this time. In fact, it's very, very fluid. It's caused a bit of a, a wave, but that's okay. I do like saying that, don't I? Alright, so now we're going to pour in the dusky pink colour here. And then I'm going to pour in some purple. I'll just keep alternating and pouring in the white as well until we get this mould nice and filled. And I can already tell we are going to get that really nice swirl that she was wanting in here. I actually think when I installed my workbench here, I think I am just a tiny, tiny little bit off it being perfectly level because my moulds never fill up level. So I'm just going to pop that spoon under there and that looks better. So it must just only be about a mil that I was out when I installed these bench tops and everything. But you know what? If you haven't seen the tour of my workshed, 
the workshed that I work out of, I actually put all of this together myself. Apart from the actual shed, um, we did have to bring somebody in to build the shed because it is... Um, we needed a retaining wall and it was just such a big job that needed to be done. We actually did pay professionals to come in and install the shed for us. Um, but everything inside the shed, I actually did myself. So I clad all my walls with um, MDF sheeting. We did have the electrician come in to do that. And we also had a plumber to come in to do the water because that is an actual legal requirement but I installed and built all the kitchen cabinets myself I laid the floor and everything so if my bench top is just one mil out that's not bad in my opinion for someone who has never done anything like that before so I think we can move with that just tucking a spoon underneath the mold now this mold is very very full I still have a bit of batter that I want to put in to make it higher so what I'm going to do is leave this for about 10 minutes so that the soap sets up a bit and then I'm going to come back and just mound it up to give her a really nice high top soap okay so this is starting to thicken up for me but it is still nice and fluid enough that I have that sort of play with it the violet sort of smell is really coming through on this it's really really pretty blend so it was just basically a 50-50 mix of fresh raspberry and violet and I'm just going to pile this soap onto the top here um, just so we can get some nice high bars and then we will put the botanicals on. Okay, so I'm going to finish playing with that top now. And what I'm going to do, I've got a stainless steel fork here and I'm just actually going to run some lines across the top of here which will hopefully give these botanicals a little bit more grip into this soap batter. So I'm just going to come down the one side and then we'll do it the same thing on the other side of this soap. And again, with this soap, it's going to be cut down the middle and then um, into the, the half bar sizes as well. So doing it this way, I kind of get to see where the middle of the soap is here. So I can make sure that I put my flowers on either side of that sort of halfway line. And then I don't pull them through when we go to cut the, the soap. So what I'm going to do is we've got some... Um, these are actually organic rose petal leaves, so I'm just going to sprinkle a handful of them down each side of the soap and then we'll come in with some jasmine petals as well. sure I go through tap them all into that soap so that when we go to cut them they don't all fall off or even when I go to unmold them so that they don't actually fall off during that process so that is looking good now I'm not going to put any glitter on this one um, even though it is quite a feminine soap there are going to be both men and women at the wedding so I don't want to put glitter on all of the men's soaps as well so we'll pull that off like that and the kookaburras I don't know if you can hear that on the camera the kookaburras are starting to sing for the afternoon 
Okay, so one last thing I'm going to do for this one. I do tend to find my tops that aren't piped top soaps. I do tend to get a little bit of soda ash on them. So I'm just going to give them a quick spritz with some 100% rubbing alcohol. And then I am going to leave this one sit overnight and come back tomorrow and cut it open and have a look at the swirl. And we should have a really pretty wispy swirl because it was nice and fluid. So we are now back to cut the raspberry and violet and it smells really nice. It is such a gorgeous combination of fragrances. Really nice and fresh and sweet but that violet also cuts through that sweetness so it's not too sickly sweet. I'm going to cut this exactly the same way as I did of the first wedding soaps and that's so that I've got the flowers pointing me so that they don't drag through the soap. And then I'm going to cut it into the bars and then we'll get the single bar cutter and we'll start cutting down through the middle. And I'm expecting on this one to have a really nice pretty swirl because we had such a fluid batter on this one. So let's see what we've got. We're almost through to the bottom. I have lost a couple of flowers, but there's still plenty on there. We'll just catch the end. And I think this one is going to have the sort of swirls that she was hoping for. And oh, look, and this piece even has a tiny little love heart in it. So that's really super cute. And it's on both sides of the soap there. So that has come up really pretty. Oh, and look. <laughs> This bar has that same little love heart, so I wonder if I've got the love heart all the way through on these soaps. That's really quite cute. And this also seems to be a perfect circle from one of those drop swells. So yeah, we've got that little heart there, and there's almost another form. This is full of little tiny hearts, which I think is really appropriate for a wedding soap. So pull this bar off and see what we've got here too. So it is such a pretty swirl, and the colours are... the the dusk, um, the vintage rose is pretty much that same dusky rose colour. The lavender on this is probably a little bit brighter, but I think the two colours go really well together. So what I might do now is just pick up the rest of this loaf of soap. And in fact, I'll take this one off because this piece I will actually keep. Um, I usually do, when I do wedding favours, whatever the bride or, and groom have ordered, I usually give to them a piece as well as a, as a present because usually I know I did it on our wedding. When you order favours for your guests, you often forget to keep yourself a little memento. So I will be gifting some of this soap to the bride and groom and they will get a whole piece. So we'll keep that piece for them as a whole. I'm going to pick these ones up off here and then we'll go and grab the single bar cutter and we'll cut them up into the correct sizes. Right, so I have my single bar cutter here and I've still got it lined up so I can get these bars cut nicely in half. I'm just going to grab this little bundle of three here and again I'm going to line it right up against the edge of this soap and I'm going to cut straight down and through the middle. I can see I've got a little petal there that this is going to catch on and I don't want to drag it through so I'm actually going to take it off and keep going down and then these will be the little individual bars of soap and they are a really nice size as a gift fate or as a favor they fit beautifully in the hand here and you can still get really nice swirls and a really pretty top on them so here's the, and this is one of the ones with the little love heart in it i'm so pleased i've got all these little heart, love hearts it's always nice to find nice patterns in the soap. So here's another one with that little love heart. We'll grab the next three and cut those. Now she's only wanting 12 out of this set. So 12 bars of soap cutting half, a total of 24. So we'll get that bit off there. So again, just lining it up against the edge and then cutting straight down the middle. And again, because I put the flowers on either side of the soap, I'm not really worried about any of them dragging down, but I am just watching just in case I did miss any of them. So here's these two here. 
So I hope you've enjoyed watching me make the raspberry violet soap. If you have, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you haven't already, why not hit the subscribe button and the little bell to be notified of the next time I bring out a soaping video. So thank you so much for watching and until next week, have a great one. Bye.